Hello everyone, welcome back to Global Government News. This is the second part of this news bulletin for August 17th, 2010. This is from the Tehran Times. It's titled, Russian Wildfires Raise Chernobyl Radiation Fears. And this was, of course, from the August 12th. So I'm just uh, putting this up there because there is an update uh, with these wildfires. Just read the first paragraph here. It says, Russian emergency workers have increased forest patrols in western region in a western region previously contaminated by the 1986 Chernobyl nuclear disaster, trying to prevent wildfires from spreading harmful radiation, officials said Wednesday. And then uh, when you go forward to recent news, which is, this is from yesterday, it says, um, Russian wildfires shrink while temperatures cool in Moscow, and I guess uh, they finally get some relief uh, as it cools off, uh, just like around the U.S. here, it's been uh, kind of cooling off as well. Um, says Russian officials say firefighters have had success containing wildfires throughout the country while cold front is poised, poised to end Moscow's record-breaking heat wave. says that uh, the temperature is expected to reach between 25, uh, 21 and 25 degrees Celsius on Monday. For more than a month, Moscow's temperatures have approached and sometimes surpassed 40 degrees uh, while thick smog and wildfires blanketed the city. And there's been conflicting reports as far as um, how... What the situation on the ground was with the fires in Russia, uh, some there was reports. Most of the reports that were coming from Russia, the Russian authorities and media were saying that everything was good. There was no radiation, and um, while at the same time there was reports that uh, the Chernobyl reactor site was already on a you know already ablaze. So um, there you go. That's that's pretty much the reports that have been coming out on this. Oh, and the only reason I wanted to point this out was because in the first video I covered the BP oil disaster and how everything was fine as far as the food goes. You can, you know, the food, uh, the seafood in the Gulf is good to eat and safe, uh, much like this. So it's kind of one of those things where everything just gets kind of glossed over and all of a sudden it's just out of sight, out of mind. Everything's good. So, I mean, I'm glad that this has ended and uh, that the Russians finally got some relief, so. But I just hope, just like the BP disaster, that, uh, you know, after it's all said and done, that everything is safe. And they're not, you know, to, people aren't just lying to cover their own ass. But it says, uh, Judge Missouri funeral protest ban unconstitutional. It says uh, a federal judge Monday ruled that Missouri laws restricting protests near funerals are unconstitutional. It says Missouri legislators passed two laws in 2006 in response to protests at service members' funerals by members of Westboro Baptist Church on Topeka, of Topeka, Kansas. The church contends that the deaths are God's punishment for the U.S. tolerating homosexuality. That just sounds totally ludicrous. Um, it says the primary state law had barred protests near any church, cemetery, or funeral establishment from an hour before until an hour after any funeral ceremony, procession, or service. The secondary measure specifically stated protesters must stay back at least 300 feet from ceremonies and processions. It says the ruling came in a lawsuit filed by the American Civil Liberties Union, or the ACLU, on behalf of Westboro church member Shirley Phelps Roper. Last year, Missouri officials were barred from enforcing the protest restrictions while the lawsuit was pending. Missouri Attorney General Costa appealed that decision but said the U.S. Supreme Court refused without comment to consider. And it says, uh, Gonder said, Gation's hands were tied by a federal appeals court ruling that there was no compelling government interest in protecting people from unwanted speech outside their homes. According to court documents, members of the Kansas church say they have held more than 42,000 pickets, including more than 500 funerals. And uh, if you want to know my take on it as a veteran, as an ex-Marine or a former Marine, um, I'm all about free speech. And I think it comes to a certain point where you're not going to be able to just tell people that they can't publicly protest um, a funeral when it comes, you know, basically you can, you can, you can do it at the actual site of the funeral in a church. But as far as, you know, along the roads and that you can't protest where the procession goes down the road or, or any, you know, any, anywhere outside that, I think you can't really touch that. But as far as the actual cemetery and, and protesters congregating around there and around a church, um, I do think that there should be some kind of protection for people that are holding services for service members. Um, 
whether you agree with them or not, I think that people should not be selfish because that's pretty much what it comes down to. I think, uh, you know, protesting is good to get the word out. And I do know and I do, I am aware of that when you are in the military, you are representation and property of the state. So uh, people protesting aren't really protesting that person's death. You know, the way they look at it is it's the best, most efficient way of protesting a war. Um, and they feel that they care about the soldiers more than the, than the family members. Um, but in reality, it really doesn't help the situation. If you want to protest the war, don't protest at, uh, at military service members' uh, funerals. Um, you know, I disagree with their mission, but at the same time, have respect um, for the families uh, and for the person who's died instead of putting uh, your own, I guess, political interests ahead of theirs. That's all I have to really say about it. And I think most of you are pretty much know how I feel about the war on terror and all that. So I guess what I'm saying is we shouldn't have to create a law. We should just kind of, like I said, put yourself in other people's shoes, you know. And there's a time and place for everything, and I don't think that's really the time for it. This is Mexico, a hunting party of eight killed in uh, Oaxaca State. It says, unidentified gunmen shot eight men to death and piled their bodies in a pickup truck in southern state of uh, Oaxaca. I'm not even going to pronounce it anymore. Mexican authorities reported Monday after a weekend in which at least 19 people were slain nationwide. The victims were apparently on a hunting trip. Uh, in this rural city near, or the rural town near the Gulf Coast when they were attacked. The state prosecutor's uh, office said that they were shot in the head and found Sunday and one was 15 years old. Uh, motivation, uh, the motive is under investigation, but the region has been wracked by drug violence, land disputes, and other feuds. Yeah, land disputes. They're just going and taking people's land, the drug cartels. And, uh, you know, my buddy's telling me about that, how it is down there, and he pretty much verified what I was, what my belief was, which is it's getting, it's not getting, it's it's pretty damn bad down there. I mean, they're just normal business owners that are trying to have a little business. They're shaking them down and threatening them, and if they don't, they end up dead. Um, and you just comply. And basically, it's not so much, the, it's not really a government. It's a proper government for the drug cartels, and it's basically a mafia system. And they are in charge of the government, and the drug, and the government is used to get rid of all the competition, um, so the smaller cartels. So that when you see the war on drugs with, you know, Cart Cart Calderon or whatever, um, it's really just the government being used as strong arm to take out uh, the competition of the real, the real government, which is the drug cartel. So hey, I mean, there's been head decapitations. There's been people like, and this isn't just one. It's always like a group of people, and then hangings from a bridge. And this is all in the past month to, past month or two. And so, you know, hey, if you want to go vacation there. Go right ahead. You know, it's like people that go to Iran, those stupid people from Britain or the U.S. who went to Iran for a hiking trip. It's like, what are you, a moron? I'm sorry. You know, it's like, well, what are you going to go to Iran backpacking for as a white person? Seriously. And then, and then be surprised because you get snatched up because you're a possible spy. This is called Drug Hitman Kidnap Mexican Mayor Near U.S. Border. See, I'm telling you, it's a great place, man. Just total freedom. And you know what? Um, I see the U.S. becoming a lot like this in our near future if things do not change soon. Suspected drug hitmen have abducted the mayor of a tourist town near Mexico's northern city of Monterey and last in the latest surge in the drug violence threatening to undermine industry and scare off offenders. You see, they keep saying, it's, oh, it's just drug violence. It's not just drug violence. They're taking over the damn country. You understand that? They're ta taking land. They're ruining the country. <laughs> I don't think I... Oh, man. This article, Mass Die-Off of Coral Reef Triggered by 93 Degree Ocean. Uh, this year we had El Nino, which is warming of the waters. But, of course, we will blame it on humans driving their cars. Global warming. So. And lastly, White House Directive erects signs at all stimulus projects as, quote, symbol of President Obama's commitment to the American people. Yeah, basically propaganda. And I remember when I first saw this, as far as the uh, stimulus going, the Re Recovery and Reinvestment Act, I knew it was propaganda, and it's ex exactly what it is. It's not required, and it's wasted money on the signs telling something that we already know. They're wasting our money.